How's it going? Um, I'm Charlie. Um, I'm going to talk about this today. So, hi. Um, you might, might know me from such places as the internet um, or GitHub or Twitter. Um, I am the director of UX platform at GoDaddy. Uh, I was previously at a company called Nojitsu that GoDaddy acquired in February. Uh, it's been about a year now. Uh, I'm also the gold director uh, that's elected at the Node Foundation. So if you were downstairs before, I have had a busy day. Uh, so, you know, the thing about GoDaddy is to sort of understand that the, the tech stack so sort of has always been like this. Um, and what I mean by that is that it's very eclectic. Um, and the reason for that is that the feature is what matters. So you think about a company like Netflix that sort of offers the same thing but ubiquitously across a bunch of different platforms. GoDaddy has a very wide variety of features that it is offering to customers through a variety of different sources, uh, whether that be things that you attach to domain, whether that be an entirely complete vertical that you might see in other companies like Wix or Squarespace, that would be Website Builder, or email marketing, so you know, your MailChimps, uh, that's GoDaddy email marketing. So there's just a ton, a ton of features that are floating around. Um, and so over time, probably over the last two years, that image that you saw has transitioned to something that is more like this, in that it is eclectic, but all that green stuff is Node. Um, so I don't know if that analogy worked really well, but I thought those images looked pretty cool. Uh, last February, um, my old boss, Antonio, gave a talk about how the website builder team had transitioned to a complete Node API stack and the performance gains that they saw there. And the story since then has really been from production, or sorry, proof of concept to production and proliferation. So I'm going to talk today about all the different places that we're using it. Uh, back in February, it was already being used in places that are pretty run of the mill for Node, right? CI CD, uh, as I previously had already talked about, the website builder product. Uh, and in doing this, it became pretty obvious that we needed to change the way that GoDaddy was doing things. Um, this was right around the time that I joined. So, you know, we had to talk about microservices. Uh, and how many people use a microservices architecture where they work now? Small amount of hands. Um, so it really depends on moving away from something like this, a monolith, right? Uh, untether yourself from that and then move on. Uh, but it's a little bit more than that. You might be getting yelled at because nobody really understands them. So you've got to sort of dig in and say, okay, why do we want to do these things? Why do we want microservices? Why is that helpful for what we do at GoDaddy? Uh, the first thing that I'd like to point out is one of my favorite quotes about organizational structure, uh, which is that any organization that designs a system defined broadly will produce a design whose structure is the copy of that organization's communication structure. Um, and because GoDaddy has always been this diaspora of products, that communication has sometimes been challenging, which has led to a sort of set of monoliths that don't necessarily work well together. By reducing that coupling, you can actually get a huge amount of performance gain both on the organizational level and on the purely technical level. And that pure technical optimization is important to us for, for these things, um, which probably doesn't look like this anymore, but it's super important for us because we do a massive amount of business. We're a global company. Uh, mobile performance is just sort of one of the buzzwords today with myself and my colleagues. And that's important because let's say that you have a phone of some sort, and normally to make, you know, say a domain purchase, you have to talk to three things. And those three things might be old. Uh, you know, every TLD is its own special unicorn snowflake pile of garbage, as I've been saying the last couple of days. And that has nothing to do with GoDaddy. That's just ICANN and TLDs in general. They're very, very painful to work with. Um, anyone else here work for a registrar? Good. Then I have pure certainty in the room. Uh, so now imagine that um, you were going to introduce some sort of, uh, as I said, three requests. Uh, you're going to introduce some sort of uh, mobile backend. So you're still going to have to make those three requests, but you can make them on much, much faster networks. So you don't have to do three different DNS ne negotiations. You don't have to do three SSL handshakes. You can do those things once and get a pretty sizable performance gain. Uh, it also allows for smaller deployments so that you are no longer trying to fit a giant ship in a bottle. You can have lots of little ships, as they should be. 
but of course, there are none of these. There are no silver bullets. Um, and of course, there are not all rainbows and unicorns. If you're going to design something that is supposed to be simple, like a mousetrap, and do that with microservices, sometimes you might end up with this, mousetrap the game, which is still a mousetrap, but obviously has a huge amount of complexity that might not necessarily need to be there. Uh, so you have to design for failure. Uh, so if this bridge falls down, you can see it's still sort of working. You can probably still walk across it, even though it's starting to fall over. Um, so those are the main reasons. Uh, what I'm going to move on to is sort of how we build these microservices. Um, how do we make these Lego blocks that play well together? Uh, that is primarily a combination of Node, Express, some sort of database, mainly Cassandra, some Redis. Um, that's, I would say, the, the majority of things. Uh, some other libraries in there that are pretty common throughout the Node community. But then you build something, and you've got to actually test it, which is hard for a lot of people. Um, I think testability and testing is a cross-cutting concern that affects many large enterprises because people are lazy intrinsically, uh, and that's you know, hard to break. So you need to explain the appropriate testing tools, uh, like ProxyQuire, if anyone's used that. It is a way to switch out the require statements so that you can mock things, pretty useful. Um, pretty standard Mocha, code coverage, some sort of assertions, some other type of mocking. Um, but you know, even that stuff has to be dry. You can't, I don't know how many people have dealt with like way more test code than they ever wanted to. Raise your hand. Yeah, right. Um, I saw somebody from a big company raise their hand. He knows what I'm talking about. Uh, so just don't repeat yourself in your tests either. You know, have that uh, consistency. And that has been something that we've been working on a lot this year at GoDaddy. Um, but then there are all of these fun things. And these things, when you have to do them all, it's sort of like this, right? It's, it's dragons. Um, we're working on some stuff to fix that, um, but can't really talk about that today. Uh, we're going to talk about that more in coming months. But regardless of what you're doing, uh, your framework really can't do everything. I'm just going like, to say that one more time. Your framework can't do everything. So you've got to go back to these first principles. And educating people on them has been a big part of the Node story. Because you've got a bunch of folks who used to be a .NET engineer or a PHP dev or a Ruby dev. And they're coming to this whole new platform. And they're just sort of like, wait, well, I'll just sort of copy what exists and then move on from there. But if what was written originally was sort of not the idiomatic Node that you want, you have to break that down culturally. And so we've still gotten a lot of really good things out of this. Um, for example, Next time, if you're a GoDaddy customer, how many customers in the room? Like, small handful? All right, doesn't matter. Um, this, it replaces a seven-year-old product um, that just shipped last week. Uh, it'll be you know, coming to you soon. Uh, there's also some other new help things and you know, buzzwordy things like big data for small business. Um, and then there's what my team works on, which is uh, these things called browsers. Uh, I found this. It was probably the best slide that I've ever seen. Um, and that is um, front end ops. So a lot of builds, a lot of front end tooling, sort of extending on one of the three verticals that Node is good at, which is front end. Uh, but because we work literally with every single team at GoDaddy, I keep coming back to this thing, Conway's Law, right? Uh, if you have a bunch of different product teams and they're all responsible for one product, then how do you build cross-cutting infrastructure, right? Why would any team work with another one unless they had some sort of backbone of open source? So that's been a big part of this year with Node, is trying to educate people not just about Node itself, but about how the Node community and the Node open source community in particular operates, and trying to replicate that method of doing things internally. And it's been pretty successful. Um, I'm happy to say, you know, like I was showing you before, Slay is something we've been working on um, that's been sort of fostered in that same internal open source way, and we're going to probably be releasing it later this year. Um, sorry, early next year, because it's not 2016 yet. Um, so OK, great. You work at a big company. How do you do it? Uh, and that is you know, a good question. One of the things that we did very early on um, 
as I mentioned, I'm part of the Node Foundation board, and so I've been working with the folks on the technical committee like as colleagues for many years. And the working group model was incredibly successful, right? You know, you've got working groups for pretty much every small feature within Node that exists today, whether it be documentation or postmortem or oh, I don't know, tracing, or just the core TSC, or the website, or internationalization. There are people that are just sort of dedicated to working on that. So you've got these groups of people, and you're going to have those same groups of people that work on each of these products. So if you're doing Node and you don't work on the same product, just sort of get together and form working groups. The other big one that I think a lot of big companies don't do well, and I'm kind of pretty proud that we've been making serious headways here, is around mentorship, just doing more of that with everyone, everyone. So not just the people that are on your team, but the people that are on other teams. Um, so once you sort of solve those two things, like actually talk to other people and mentor them if you're, you know, feel that you want to, uh, or being, having, how do I say this? Um, divorcing yourself of your ego to a point where you can go ask for help which I think a lot of us as developers have trouble with. Um, and then, you know, sort of just working on something. Like, just do something together, even if it's, you know, moving a stick around. Who cares? Because that communication is incredibly important. Uh, in our case, uh, one of our biggest problems was this. Um, anyone know who this is? It is Cassandra. Uh, and Cassandra was a, um, is a Greek myth. Anyway, that's not important. It's also a database uh, that's kind of a pain uh, if you've never you know, had experience with it. Um, so we have been working on some higher level abstractions on top of this. This, of course, is uh, Apollo. Um, that, again, will be coming out probably before Slay sometime, hopefully. I was trying to get it out this week, uh, but you know, sort of naming things is hard. So more on that like next week. Um, and that is just the tip of the iceberg. So I have five minutes for QA, right on time. So anyone? That means I did a good job. You just invite them to join, right? Like the people on, it's one of those fascinating things where if someone feels like they're being left out, they're gonna wanna be included so fast that they're gonna be like beaten down your door to come sit in on your meeting. Cause they're not closed off, right? I mean, like the node working groups are totally open. People who wanna join can join, their minutes are open. You have to use those same principles of transparency at wherever you work. Um, so you can't just like, you know, have meetings and not record them. We record all those meetings, we take notes those all end up on some internal share that anyone can access. So very transparent, very easy to get involved. Cool. All right. Well, we finished because uh, nobody had any questions, which means I did a good job. So if you have any more questions later, I'll be around for a little while, and uh, I'll talk to you then.